Hello again guys, thank you for joining me once again this Friday for our little travel show. I've got a few things I want to talk about and one of them is the coronavirus, but it's some good things that you can see going on again. So uh, everybody wants you to be scared of that, but I don't want you to be. So I'm going to show you some good things that are going on. But first, what we're going to do is our change. So I got some recorded this time and <laughs> we're going to go ahead and watch that real quick. Okay guys, I've got some construction outside, so I'm sorry if you can hear that. I'm not sure if you can or not, but I'm sorry if you can. So it is now time for us to put our change in our little sleeves here. I wanted to show you something. Don't be afraid to pick this up. Can you guys see that? It's a penny that has just been eaten right up. And I say don't be afraid to do that because the bank will still take this. So that's going right in that sleeve. And that's a travel penny. <laughs> So I'm just going to put this in here. You guys get yours. Let's do it together. Let's make sure we are always saving towards our goals, no matter what they are. If you're watching this and this is not for travel and you're just sort of watching to see what this crazy girl's doing, well, I'll explain. I'm trying to, basically I'm doing this to just show you guys how saving pennies and saving quarters and dimes and everything matters in the long run. If you're going to save for travel or anything over a year, you would be surprised how much money you have if you actually take the time to save the money. And you can do change without even really thinking about it. Also, I kind of wanted to say this too. One of the things I used to do, oh, and I think the pennies are full. So I'm going to stop doing those and later on I'll switch that, that out. One of the things that you can also do, like if you don't want to use this method and you just want to use your debit card, is every time you spend, it doesn't matter what for, you buy gas, you buy food, you do whatever it is you're doing. Ooh, I think I'm going to keep that as a wheat penny. And it won't show up. There it goes. Set that aside. <clears throat> Take the change that's left over. So say you had five dollars and then you, let's see, yeah, there we go, that's better, you can actually see it now. Let's say you had five dollars, you spent four twenty four seventy five. dollars oops, I missed, oh well, that's okay, it's in there. <laughs> That'll give you 25 cents, you move 25 cents over into your savings and that's your change. So if you didn't want to do it that way, you can also try that. I've done that before and greatly increased our, oh no. Pennies are full. Quarters are almost full. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. So you can do it that way. Just move it over into like a travel. I don't know about anyone else's bank, but our bank will allow you to make multiple checking accounts. So you can just move it over into a travel checking account and go from there. All right. Let me see if there's any more in here. Yes, there is. All right. Now I'm going to do something about these dimes because <laughs> they just won't go here. Okay. So the quarters and pennies in, are full and the dimes I'm going to have to pull out and redo. So that's $10 towards our North Carolina trip. And then I have two rolls of pennies in there also. So let me see here. And so that makes that 11 plus what we already have in there. So let's go count that. Okay, guys, I hope you were able to put aside for your travel. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know where you want to go. How close are you? How far away are you? Have you picked up anything like a new job or something to help you do it? Have you found a bunch of money somewhere? Just let me know. I love to hear those stories. So we're going to jump into our first story from Travel and Leisure. It says, Japan's future ultra-fast bullet train will reach speeds up to 311 miles per hour, which I thought was uh, crazy because 311 miles per hour, if you, have you guys ever gone 100 miles per hour? It feels like you're just floating. And this thing actually will float. So let's look at this for just a second. It says... That Japan is home to some of the fastest trains in the world and now the country is working on a bullet train that will leave all the rest behind. 
According to the Matador Network, Japan Railways Group, a conglomerate of companies that overtook rail operations from the government of Japan, has been developing an ultra-fast bullet train that will take passengers from Tokyo to Osaka in 67 minutes. For context, that commute will virtually be cut in half, since the current average travel time between these two cities is about two and a half hours, according to this Matador network. In order to do this, a linear bullet train will be developed to run on wheels until it gains enough speed to retract them and essentially levitate four inches above the rail all the way through the journey. I'm just going to stop right there because they're going to levitate four inches. I guess this is magnetics again. So that's crazy. Uh, but by doing this, the train is estimated to reach about 311 miles per hour. Would you want to go on a train that was going 311 miles per hour? I think I would, just once for the experience. What do you think? <laughs> I don't e I don't even like I don't even know how to how to even conceptualize that. How fast would you really have to go? Or how fast would you really be going? I mean, I guess when these bullet trains first came out, there was a lot of talk about uh, how unsafe they were because as soon as anything was on that rail the the train went off and a bunch of people died they I haven't heard that in a long time I think it's been about eight years since I've heard anything about anybody dying on a railway but you know there's that just like with everything there's a cost I suppose I'd still want to do it though 311 miles per hour that's amazing <laughs> so let's go on to our second one and this says five reasons oh hold on let me get back over there i messed up <laughs> okay so five reasons you need to take a vacation according to science can you buy a ticket to a better mood hop a flight to a healthier you the travel industry would say yes and increasingly so does science for decades, researchers have been probing the benefits of vacations. They wondered whether taking time off from our everyday lives, from deadlines, expectations, and office politics, from grocery runs, sibling squabbles, and commutes, has more than a vague, I feel chilled out payoff. Almost across the board, they found evidence that vacations can positively impact everything from blood pressure to energy levels, and that doesn't just apply to wellness escapes. You don't need to spend up on a destination spa or engage in a trendy forest bathing, but you do need to take those days off, a challenge for many Americans. We're one of the only advanced economies that does not guarantee paid leave, says Bridget Schultz, author of Overwhelmed, Work, Love, and Play When No One Has the Time, and director of the Better Life Lab at the think tank New America. One in four Americans has no paid access to or sorry, has no access to paid vacation and those who do often don't use it, she says. Now, they go on just to give you more stuff about that. And it says, when you go away in the United States and other people are in the office, you feel guilty, but you cannot be productive 365 days a year, 12 hours a day. The brain doesn't work that way. Uh, let's see, experts don't know yet exactly how much time you need to take off to get the full benefits. Studies have variously shown that just four days can impact stress and well-being and that positive effects peak at eight days and that longer vacations, more than 10, soothe stress better than shorter ones. So essentially guys, take a vacation <laughs> and it doesn't even, it's not really a vacation to a different place. It's just a break from what you're always doing. We're so busy trying to make that money, you know what I mean? And we're tr so busy trying to get everybody to each place and go there and go, 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 that we don't ever really rest. And this is something that I think is important because I'm a Christian and in Christianity, there's times for rest. Like you have, you work six days a week, you take the seventh day off. You don't do anything that is supposed to be making you money because we are built also for rest. <laughs> there are times, even the Jewish calendar, where they don't do anything. You take a break for like a month and you are celebrating what God has done for you and you're celebrating 
<clears throat> sort of like uh, you're remembering the things that some of the that the Jews went through and things like that. But it is a break from work. It's time. It's spending time with family. Now you see this most often in uh, like Christmas time, where they have almost a two week time period where they're they're not doing anything. So I thought that was interesting. Some of this stuff that you're seeing now is kind of already worked into a lot of religions. So we, we already know this about ourselves. We understand we can't just go, 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 go. We need a break. So if anybody asks you, how are you doing? And you feel a little stressed out, say, I think I need to take my travel pill <laughs> and go on a vacation. So now is the coronavirus section of this video. And uh, so I didn't really know how I was going to start this really, except that this is the part that we're going to talk about. Uh, let's see, how do I say this? Okay, so let's start first with where the CDC is warning travelers not to go. Okay, and the CDC is warning travelers not to go to China. Okay, so January, the State Department issued a level four travel advisory, which is level four is do not travel. You cannot go there. Excuse me. It's the most severe warning as for all of China. So that the level four excludes Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan. South Korea, Wednesday, the CDC is warning against travel, and it's a level three. Excuse me. And that's avoid non-essential travel. Okay. Italy is on the list now as well. The CDC has it at a level two. And that means practice enhanced precaution. Older adults shouldn't go. Younger children, if you just got here, you know, if you're just born, don't go. Uh, you know, wash your hands, things like that. Stay away from sick people. Japan. Japan, like Italy, also has a level two. So that means practice enhanced precautions. Don't be, you know, shaking hands without washing your hands afterwards. Maybe you take, I don't know, some alcohol wipes or something with you. Singapore, there's no CDC or State Department advisory, but it has had 100 recorded coronavirus cases. So maybe you should just put it at a level two for yourself. The CDC advisory for Hong Kong is level one, which is a watch. So you can still go there. They'll let you go there, uh, but you need to be careful. Probably do practice enhanced precautions, level two. See, so Iran is also level two, which is again, practice enhanced precautions. Mongolia is a level three, which is reconsider travel. So if you are thinking about going there, you probably should not right now, just because of the virus, just postpone it. Cruise ships, uh, they're saying reconsider going on those, <laughs> especially ones going to Asia or within the Asian sphere. Um, they're not going to be stopped, it looks like, but they're going to be faced with strict screening procedures and travel restrictions could affect itineraries. Uh, as we've seen, you know, you're not always going to be able to get off of these ships. So it's better that you just don't go right now, maybe postpone it, maybe do one that's just like to Florida or something. <laughs> don't do one that is to Asia and things like that. So the next story I want to talk about is a little bit, it's still on the coronavirus, but this is something that people are doing to um, combat it, okay? So the airlines are sending in the world's strongest soap, basically. Let's read this, let's read it. All right, so what cleaning products are used on airlines to help disinfect it? So the airline Qantas used ViraClean, a disinfectant made by Sydney-based Whitley Corp. It's a pink lemon, 
Let's see, lemon-scented liquid that kills a range of bacteria and viruses, including hepatitis B and herpes simplex. According to the manufacturer, surfaces heavily soiled with blood or sweat should be soaked with undiluted Viroclean. Gloves and eyes protection are recommended. Though it's not classed as a dangerous substance, Whitley says. So Korean Air opted for this disinfectant called MD-125. It's a diluted version of D-125, a cleaning solution made by Microgen and used in interest industries from healthcare to poultry farming. It says that it acts against 142 bacteria and viruses, including salmonella, avian flu, HIV, and measles. So how are the planes cleaned? So it was cleaned for 36 hours, and this is the one, the 747 Boeing Company, on its two flights from Wuhan and another to Tokyo back to Australia. All right. So it was cleaned for 36 hours. Pillows, blankets, magazines, and headphones were all thrown out. The cabin was sprayed twice with the disinfectant, and it covered seats, floors, armrests, tray tables, overhead luggage, bins, and walls. The cabin was then wiped down. The plane's air filters, which are similar to those used in surgical theaters, were replaced. The 747 was back on the Sydney-Santiago commercial route this week, according to the data from FlightAware.com. Korean Air used one Boeing 747 on two flights, and as well as spraying and wiping down and doing everything that they did before on this other plane, teams replaced seat covers and dividing curtains near the galleys and disinfected the luggage hold, the airline said. So they were only allowed back into service once the CDC said okay. So when you're flying on these planes, they are being disinfected. They are being cleaned. You're not just walking into an airplane that wasn't cleaned up. But that doesn't mean, you know, if, you know, God forbid, there's somebody on there with that and they can still pass it that way. But you're not going on to a dirty plane. Most of these guys are cleaning this stuff up. So just just be aware of that. That's not really being reported. And I really don't like that all they're reporting is people are dying. People are dying. I mean, yes, people are dying. And that's unfortunate. I'm, I'm sad about that. But you're also not going into situations most of the time where it hasn't been clean, it hasn't been infected, things like that. So just keep that in mind whenever they're telling you about this. All right, so something a little cheery and a little crazy that I found while I was looking around. Speaking of airplanes, all right, so there is an airline called I know I'm going to get this wrong. Uh, Etihad Airways. I think that's how you say it. I'm not sure. And they have something called. Let me let me do this. Hold on. Let me let me scroll up. Let me read it one more time just to make sure I get it right. Okay. Etihad's A380 has a three-room apartment with a butler. And this is on an airplane. So hold on. Let me show you this. All right, forget first class. Let's go with an apartment with a butler. So, this says, we're talking a bedroom complete with a spacious bed and wardrobe, an ensuite bathroom with a fully functioning shower, and of course, a living area where you can stretch out. Watch your favorite shows and tuck into some delicious meals. Oh, and don't worry about having to flag down a busy flight attendant. Passengers even get access to a butler. No wonder it's hailed as the world's coolest flight experience. Each of the three rooms makes for a seriously glamorous in-flight experience. And they have some pictures. So here's like the bedroom. That bed doesn't look huge, but it's bigger than what you'd get anywhere else. This guy is showing you like where he, um, where the flight attendants escape to. <laughs> if you need to. So in the living area, you'll find drinks cabinet with chilled refreshments. You don't have to watch the in-flight entertainment that's provided for everyone else. The resident comes with his own flat screen TV where you can watch your own stuff. There's no tray table. There's just lots of different services. So here's like the living area right here. That's what that looks like. Crazy, right? And then that's what the bathroom looks like. So that's actually a shower, and you don't really get that usually anywhere else. 
So that's for you and your and one other person. They're only allowing two. So I'm just gonna switch right over here. This is a virtual tour of the cabins. All right, so let's see if I can go the residence. Make sure this is still showing up. Yes, it is. Okay, and then this will let you sort of look around. And this is crazy, guys. As much as, okay, so this is the seat. This is where you'd be sitting. This is what would be over your head. So you'd still have like the ambient lighting, things like that. And again, it's only for two people. So there's would be the flat screen TV. So here's where you would call the chef. <laughs> Allow our in-flight chef to prepare your choice of fine dining and eat whenever you're ready. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Maybe I'm a little hungry right now. Okay, so this is the bedroom. Let's move into the bedroom. This is the bed. Let's see, what's this say? Ensuite bathroom with full height shower. Okay, so they're not gonna let us see the bathroom, I guess. What's this say? Get cozy with your natural fiber, custom made mattress and luxury bedding by Duxiana. Oh, okay, or Duxiana, depending on where you're from. So we've got some controls over here. I mean, this is just crazy, guys. This is just, and I tried to go see how much it would be to have this. And everything I tried, they were like, no, there's no, there's nothing available right now. So I just said, okay. So this is a five foot, four inch sliding privacy door. So you're gonna walk onto the plane just like you would any other plane. And then you're gonna walk back here to your private area. Isn't that nice? Uh, here's the butler. Butler will attend to your every need. So this has got to be expensive, right? I can't imagine this not being expensive. But just so you know, even though there might be a crazy virus out there, um, people are still going on doing their thing. They're taking expensive flights like this. They're doing whatever it is they need to do on their regular day-to-day. -day. And guys, things are being done about this virus. It's not, you know, it's not just running crazy or amok. So I hope you have a good weekend, go somewhere, have some fun, or just be saving for the fun you're going to have later. And I will see you in the next one in a couple weeks, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye.